Hey everyone, today's instructional video is from Ken DeHart. Ken DeHart is the first person to be a USPTA and PTR master professional. So you guys are in good hands with him today. Yeah, and if you're interested in finding out more about Ken DeHart, you can go down into the description to find a link to a, his uh, Facebook page and also a link to the Tennis Twist ball machine. All right, enjoy the video. We're gonna use the little mother ball machine. It's called the five cone drill because there's five cones out that the player has to practice moving around. The donut is so he knows where to recover to for the drill. So you have to go around any, one, any cone he wants to go. But once he's used that cone, it's out of play until he's used up all the other cones. Then he can go to a new pattern if he wants. But he starts out, he's gonna go around the yellow cone, recover. The next play is go around the cone back here and recover. Then one over here, then one over there. But he has to circle the cone and come back. So he has to work on moving up, recovering back, coming in from the side, recovering and moving forward to recover. So these are your five recovery footwork patterns that you teach a player. And I really can't do it without George. The five Georges teach the player how to move, where to go. What's the female one? What's her name? Georgette. And we call him George because uh, George Foreman had five kids. He named them all George. He did? Because he did, yeah. You got George, 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 and Georgette. Which one's that? That's Georgette. All right, that's Georgette, <laughs> okay? So we're gonna uh, use the little ball machine. Let's take a look at what the little mother looks like. It's called the tennis twist in real life. But we call it little mother because it tosses the ball like your mom would. So it's a tennis twist, and uh, it's, we call it little mother. And it holds 28 balls, and it's battery operated by six D-cell batteries. And this is a better ball machine to use because a big ball machine has 200 balls, and I feel obligated to hit them all. I shouldn't hit more than about 20 or 30 balls without stopping, reorganizing. In this case, whatever balls didn't make it over the net, I move them back, serve them over. Grab little mother, we walk to the other side, hit again. Right, there has to be West recovery. You don't just hit 200 balls for no particular reason because, right? yeah, it's mindless. And the last part, you're just trying to survive. So it's not even good. So we're going to usually set Little Mother about six feet in front of the service line. Now, on the bottom, it only hits one speed, but I can raise the height of it by pulling the ring out. Now she gets a short ball. And if I'm feeding little kids, I'll put it on orange ball and it says low bounce. Or I can pull the ring out and go high bounce. So he's going to use yellow ball. So we're going to make it bounce fairly deep and fairly high, but I can adjust the height of the ball, not the speed. So little mother goes here, put her about six feet in front. What I'll do is I'll give him one test shot so he gets to see where the ball is going to land. It also tells me if I have the right depth for his skill level or how, how good the batteries are. So let this first ball go by just so you'll see what it's going to look like. Don't hit it. You can hear little mother lined up. And that's the kind of ball you're going to get. And what's the hardest shot to play in a match? Is it the hard ball or the softball? Soft. Softball. So what do people do? They get the big ball machine, set it on 200 miles an hour, and say, I'm ready to play. And the first ball that comes back soft, can't play. So you learn to hit off that no pace ball because now he has to move his feet to increase his racket head speed instead of letting the, the ball speed control the racket. So I have, I have to be back in time for the next ball. Yep. Otherwise, I fail. Well, he's just a little bit behind. So. Just for safety and until he gets warmed up, I suggest that we videotape off a little bit from the side just so we don't become the target in the situation. So I'm going to turn Little Mother on. I'm going to join you on the sidelines. And we're going to enjoy watching Todd handle 14 balls off the Little Mother using the five recovery foot patterns. You're live. So this drill, he's going to make the shot. Now he has to circle one of the cones and get back to the cover. And there's number two. He has to circle a different cone. He can't use the same cone. He has to use up all five. See, he has to adjust his feet. How do you teach people to move their feet like that? It feels like he's moving 100 miles an hour. Okay, now don't forget Georgette in the back. He has to back up. Now he's practicing moving forward to hit the ball. All right, now this time go one forehand, one backhand. So now he goes. It's smart. This would be a backhand shot for him. Could be, yeah. Now recover. Now this would be a forehand because he's moving back to the side, so he's probably going to have a forehand. So, actually, it's an, IQ, it's an IQ test to find out if the guy's really smart or not. Todd passed the check. Okay. He's starting to breathe a little harder already. Now let's see if he's moving his eyes. He's moving his eyes wherever he swings at the ball. So once I get him moving, I look at him moving his eyes, is he breathing when he hits? Right, you have two points left for the match. All underspin. Underspin this time. Ready? Very good. And keep moving again. And match point. Match point. 
Good. Now, match point. Does he have to hit the ball big or medium? Medium, because it's his match point. They're hoping that he hits hard and misses. So at match point, the drill is never to miss match point. Because the match point, if I know if I miss, I lose the point. He says, okay, Ken, here you go. No pace, high ball. What are you going to do with it? But his instinct is to try to hit a winner because it's his match point. He said, it's only your match point if you don't miss. I'm hoping you miss, so it's deuce. And then all of a sudden, what happened? I, I had the match point. I lost. So let's go turn little mother off again. She has a battery operated back here. I mean, you have the ball machine one. This is a footwork machine. It's not a stroke machine. Right. Now it it's is. It's a feet machine. Because now I, we start looking at, did he look up when he hit the ball? Did he breathe when he's hitting the ball? Did he hold his breath for how many shots? Did I? Now the next would be, did he get all the balls over the net? Yes. Next one, Todd. All the balls have to go to the ad court side. Okay, now they have to go ad court into square three. Now, what, then I determine, okay, did he hit the right spin and the right speed to make it go there? So I can use my five tactical priorities in everything we do. Your first goal, get 28 balls over the net. Next time, all 28 balls over the net to the ad court side. Next one is all the balls over the net to the ad court side to square three or square four. And then to do that, he has to change the spin and the speed because that's how you monitor the depth of the shot. And I look to see if he was breathing because he said, I'm out of shape. I said, no, you're holding your breath. You're not going to get out of shape hitting 14 balls, but unless you're holding your breath. Yeah. Most of you are looking to see, did I make the shot? Because we're very concerned about, did I make it? So when you, when you go, you'll go, you missed it or made it. But you should know when you contact the ball, you shouldn't have to see where it went. Because otherwise I'm looking up too quickly on the shot. But uh, the five cone drill is one of the best ways to work out. You should never hit more than about 28 or 30 balls without stopping and replanning what you're doing. Um, I never saw anybody play tennis until I was a freshman in college. I never seen the game played before. I never seen anybody hit a tennis ball. I was playing basketball in college and it was a division, it was an NAI school. So I was running by the courts one day, doing track and field, and ran by the courts. Went to Kmart, bought a Wilson racket, can of balls, started again playing tennis. Uh, fell in love with it. Quit playing basketball because I was wasn't quite that good anyhow. And uh, if I wanted to run, I could run on the tennis court and get a better workout than running cross country. And there was a lady tennis coach. She let me uh, come and hit with the team. I said, hey, can I, can, I, can I come out and hit? She said, sure, you can hit with the guys and pick up balls. I said, I'm, I'm there. So by my junior year, I'd already won the conference doubles championship at number three doubles. And my senior year, I was captain of the team, most valuable player. But I understood tennis from the aspect of basketball. How do you move your feet? Uh, how to angle off? How to use your hands? And from baseball. My dad would play triple-A ball for the Reds. So I understood uh, how to follow a ball, how to read a ball, how to change the speed of the ball. So, to me, it made sense to play tennis like a basketball and baseball player. And so I played it and taught it that way the rest of my life. It's all just ball skills and movement skills. Um, I, got my, I finished my bachelor's degree at Campbellsville College and finished up the year, loved it. And my athletic director said, would you like to get your master's degree? I said, never considered it. Yeah, but I'd love to. So he helped me get my master's degree at Western Kentucky University. And I taught archery, bowling, tennis, badminton and came back to Campbellsville on the weekend to help the track team go to track meets. And then I got my, I taught uh, high school business programs for three years and coached the high school and college team. Then I got a chance to become a full-time tennis pro. Sold my house in Nashville, or in Kentucky, and moved to Nashville. And my first job ever was the director of tennis, and I had no idea what I was doing. It was a seven-court facility, and I was there for three years, and then I became the director of tennis at the Jewish Country Club in downtown Nashville. And, uh, I got the job because I, one of my majors was business, so I had a business plan I presented, and I was the only one that had a business plan, so I got the job. And eventually they sold the club and rebuilt it out in the country, and I got to design the pro shop, the courts, and all this stuff like that. And I was there for about five years, and then they built a huge club in Nashville called Maryland Farms. We had five dining rooms, we had uh, six indoor courts, 22 outdoor courts, Olympic-sized platform, and I was, became the director of tennis there for five years. And then I realized I needed more work on administrative skills. So I, Dennis Vandermeer asked me, would I apply for the job as the first executive director for the PTR? I said, sure. So I flew down and interviewed, got the job. So I became the first executive director for the PTR. I was there for about three years and realized I really missed the on-court stuff a lot. And so Stan Smith and Kurt Campen hired me at uh, Sea Pines to work there. And uh, I was at 31-court facility there in Hilton Head. And then 
the, the job opening came open in Arizona, where my parents had moved to, and I got the job opening there. And it was a 31 court hard court facility. We hosted the National Junior Fiesta Bowl and the ladies' hard courts. And I was there for 10 years till they, Don and his wife got a divorce. I got a divorce, and he demolished the courts. So they sent me to Atlanta, Georgia, for the sporting club at Windy Hill. And a friend of mine offered the job at Beverly Hills Country Club. I moved to L.A. to become there. Then I met my wife at Beverly Hills Country Club in the staff meetings, and we moved to San Jose and been here for 21 years. But uh, amazing ride for a country kid from Indiana. We lived out 13 miles out in the woods, and I played basketball by myself and baseball by myself, and no, there was no friends, nobody around to play with. But uh, college gave me a chance to get my master's degree and fall in love with tennis. How long have you been here? Uh, one year in March. Yeah. I was the director of tennis at AVAC for six years and San Jose Swim and Rack Club for 10 years. I was general manager of a club in, in Fremont called Mission Hills for three years and at uh, Los Gatos Swim and Rack Club for three years. So it sounds like I've jumped around a lot, but it's been a... Those years don't add up to your age. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty, I'm actually pretty old. I'm 71 now. So, but I've been around for a long time. Most of the clubs have been at five to 10 years like that. It's just I've been doing it for a long time and yeah. love the game, love the sport. Yeah. Um, uh, I was one of the first original eight PTR Master Pros, and I was the first pro in the world to be a Master Pro in both the PTR and the PTA. The first one? First one. Yeah. Yeah. That is awesome. And so that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs>